Secretary Blinken, the Embassy is delighted to have this unique opportunity to engage with you on clean energy. Kenya is not only a leader in the region, but also poised to become a global leader for clean energy and climate action. Currently, 90% of Kenya's power is generated from renewable sources, with 40% generated from geothermal, 45% from hydropower, and the remainder from wind and solar. Our assistance facilitated over 3 million off-grid and on-grid connections for homes and businesses across the country, bringing electricity to over 10 million Kenyans for the first time. This virtual tour will provide you with a glimpse of the nearly $600 million in U.S. financing across geothermal, wind, and solar renewable energy investments. I'm Vibhuti Jain, Regional Managing Director for Africa at the U.S. International Development Finance Corporation, or DFC. I'm pleased to introduce you to Capetto Wind Farm, a transaction that will begin operations this spring. Capetto will deliver 100 megawatts of clean energy to the Kenyan people, powering a quarter million households. This Power Africa project was made possible in partnership with Kenyan, international, and American investors with financing and insurance from DFC. I'm Lisa Walker, Energy Office Director for Power Africa, a U.S. government-led initiative to connect 60 million new homes and businesses across sub-Saharan Africa to clean, reliable energy, leveraging the expertise and the resources of 170 public and private sector partners. In Kenya as elsewhere, it's the missions that drive results. I'm pleased to introduce you to PowerHive, a U.S.-owned innovator in the Kenyan mini-grid space and one of our partners. The companies we support are located in national parks and on privately owned community land, but they conduct their business in a socially and environmentally responsible way. They built tunnels for wildlife to pass through their site. They are partnering with the local community who benefit from the revenue. And with the access to electricity, women no longer need to cut down trees for firewood. While Kenya has aggressively connected households and businesses in the national grid, increasing access from 23% to 75% of the population over the last eight years, Currently, 40% of rural areas are still not covered by the grid. That's primarily because it is too expensive to extend the grid to those remote areas in the near term. The U.S. government has a unique opportunity to affirm our global leadership and commitment to major climate action. Greetings. Greetings, Mr. Secretary. How are you? Hello. Very well. Good to see you all. Yes. How are you? All right. Th th thanks so much for doing this. Re really appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you. And hello, Secretary Blinken. It is truly an honor to welcome you virtually to Kenya for a conversation today on U.S.-Kenya Partnerships for Clean Energy. My name is Emily Furtick, and I'm the information officer here at the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi. And with me today, as you have just met, are leaders from the two companies that you have heard about in the introductory video. To my immediate left is Dr. Kenneth Namunje, chairman of the board of Capetto Energy. Dr. Namunje has been instrumental in the development of the Capetto Wind Farm Project. He has worked with local and national stakeholders to ensure that it becomes a reality. And to my far left, Mr. Chris Horner, President and CEO of PowerHive. And Mr. Horner, who hails from California, has been an entrepreneur and pioneer of consumer renewable energy products for well over a decade in East Africa. Mr. Secretary, allow me to turn it over to you to start our conversation with a few opening remarks. Well, Emily, thank you very much. And thank you for bringing us all together. And uh, Dr. Nmunje, uh, Mr. Horner, really appreciate uh, you joining me for this conversation. And, to everyone uh, at your companies as well uh, who've helped to make uh, this possible, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Um, I'm really eager to ask uh, some questions about your work and Kenya's clean energy sector, because I think a lot can be learned uh, from the progress your companies and the country have made toward providing sustainable energy uh, to the Kenyan people. There are lessons there uh, that go well beyond uh, Kenya. Uh, I'm pleased and proud that we've been a strong supporter uh, of this effort. Uh, we invested in, in your companies. That includes financial support, uh, like the $230 million in loans that the Development Finance Corporation uh, provided to Kipeto and uh, Wind Farm, uh, but also technical support, like the kind uh, Power Africa gives to, uh, to Power Hive to help build the 23 mini grids. Uh, these and, and other American investments in Kenyan hydropower, um, solar, uh, wind projects have helped Kenya reach a point where, <laughs> this is remarkable, more than 90% of its electricity now comes from renewable energy sources. Uh, and the country's on track to provide universal energy access by 2022. That's obviously very good uh, for the Kenyan people. Uh, it's good for the Kenyan economy. It's also good for the planet. Uh, and so I think there's something very powerful uh, going on. The only way we're going to address the, the climate crisis is by reducing the world's carbon emissions. Uh, and that means ultimately clean and renewable energy. So we need to help more countries do what Kenya's done. Uh, and we need to raise our ambitions on climate more broadly. Uh, our administration, the Biden-Harris administration, is committed to reclaiming America's leadership on this front. Uh, as you know, on, on day one, President Biden rejoined the Paris Agreement, uh, and we will meet our domestic uh, commitments. But here's what we know. Uh, delivering at home is not enough. And that's exactly why President Biden has worked to, to raise ambition and increase resilience at the global level, including through the Leaders' Summit. Uh, and it's also why, as Secretary, uh, I'm ensuring climate change is at the center of our diplomacy. Uh, anything less will fail to uh, address this emergency. And of course, in that effort, uh, we have the uh, remarkable um, secret, but not so secret weapon, uh, of uh, Secretary John Kerry leading our efforts uh, around the world. Um, as we're taking these steps, uh, there are two lessons that, that I at least take from the progress that you and others have made in Kenya. One is that governments need to collaborate more with the private sector. Your success has proven that investing in sustainable energy can be both effective and profitable. Uh, the second uh, lesson I take from this is, is how important it is to meet a range of needs at different scales. Um, on the one hand, we need massive projects like Ipeto, which will provide energy to 250,000 households on the grid. We also need smaller scale projects like PowerHive, which will reach low income communities that have never had electricity before. Uh, we can meet our sustainability goals without writing off communities that are harder to reach. Uh, and that way, uh, they can access the opportunities enabled by energy access uh, as well. So this gets me, it's a long way of getting to, to what I really want to come to, which are some questions, because I, we want to learn from your, your experience and your insights. So a couple of questions, if it's all right, to, uh, to both of you. And the first is, tell us about the impact uh, that loans and, and capital investments have uh, on starting up uh, these ventures. What, what role do they play? And in your, in your experience, at least, how critical are they to being able uh, to move forward? Dr. Namunje, maybe we start with you. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Blanken. Uh, I would say that uh, with the support of the DFC uh, granting us a $233 million dollar uh, enable the project to reach financial close. And I would also say that through Power Africa, the US government helped us to develop our biodiversity action plan, which really focuses on minimizing the possible human wildlife contact around the Kipeto side. Mm. And I would also say that the private sector has done its part as well, because our international equity shareholder in Kipeto Colactis has more than half of its investment base comprising of American investors, including a significant contribution from the pension fund of American civil servants. Mm. I would also say like, for instance, GE has supplied our highly efficient wind turbine, which is a 1.7 megawatt uh, mm. turbine. And so in short, I would say that the US government assisted in financing and has supported us in, to meet our compliance to the highest international environment and social uh, standards. 
which uh, underpins also the technology capacity that the project is built on. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And Mr. Horner. Uh, thank you for having me, uh, Mr. Secretary. Um, so PowerHive was started in 2011 and around 2015, uh, we became Kenya's first privately licensed utility hmm. uh, offering uh, clean renewable energy sources to now over uh, close to 6,000 households. Uh, and early in our, in our development, we uh, received about a half a million dollars from the US government which helped us to spur economic development and create jobs and create uh, businesses that would not only put money into the pockets of our customers, but also allows it, allowed us to innovate in new businesses that would also sort of uh, surround uh, the mini grids that we developed. So today, with that uh, investment, we've been able to start a chicken business, which is uh, putting uh, a lot of money into the hand, uh, pockets of our customers. We're now one of the leading chicken producers in Kenya. Hmm. And from that, we've also hmm. now created a whole electric mobility platform, also based on US uh, R&D and things that we've done there. So we're pretty excited about these early developments that the US government helped in terms of hmm. that early investment to try innovative new things that has led to some, some pretty remarkable uh, progress. Hmm. Well, it's, it, it, it's really good to hear that from both of you and, 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 and looking at different angles of this, because I, I, I think that what we can do in government is uh, help to be a catalyst for uh, for the work of the private sector. Our, our our greatest strength in the United States is the private sector, but the government, I think, has a, a vital role to play in, um, as I said, being being a catalyst uh, and uh, and being a partner. And the strength of these public-private partnerships in various ways, whether it's through uh, something as as large as the as the DFC, or, or whether it's through smaller uh, loans uh, or, or guarantees uh, or insurance um, seems to be potentially the real difference maker in our ability to, um, uh, to get things done. So I'm really glad to hear that. Um, another question is this. Um, meetings like President Biden's Leader Summit on Climate I think are also important ways to learn from each other, uh, to compare experience, to compare best practices, uh, to hear uh, what's worked, what hasn't worked. And so what I'm curious about is whether, uh, in your experience, you have uh, business ideas or innovations around green energy uh, that we should be exploring in the United States or, for that matter, sharing uh, elsewhere. Dr. Munja, your ideas, please. Thank, thank you, Secretary Blinken. So I'll say that Kenya is a model for uh, clean energy generation in, in Africa. Uh, with about, about 90% of our power coming from fossil fuel, non-fossil fuel sources. But the next challenge for Kenya and the US is the impact of the variability of clean energy resource in the grid uh, through investment in battery storage. And, mm -hmm. and we know that the US is a global leader in battery storage technology. So within us, Kipeto uh, shareholders, Actis and Crosskills, uh, which I chair board, uh, Kraskis as a local share partner, we're actually exploring opportunities on how to integrate battery storage into the wind farm with the support of the US Trade and Development Agency. And so I would say that this is an area that we would love to engage with US companies on and how to make this hmm. uh, move on. And, and that's an opportunity that is there. Yeah. Great. Mr. Horner, I know you'll have more ideas. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I'm fortunate, I'm one of a, a handful of uh, US companies based in Kenya that are really leading the charge in terms of uh, off grid and sort of uh, distributed generation and storage for communities uh, uh, in, the, in the sector. Um, so, you know, when I look at sort of the, the knowledge that we've actually developed and gained through the last, you know, coming up to 10 years and in, in creating highly efficient uh, solar uh, powered uh, solutions that combine electric mobility and other sort of agricultural practices. We think that when we look in particular, especially on the, um, on the, 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 the sector we're developing here around uh, mobility, working with companies in Detroit and figuring out you know, some of the best technology that's coming out of these areas would be, would be incredibly valuable to us. Hmm. So, uh, you know, given that they're a huge cost center, I think there's a lot we could do to collaborate and not only bring some of our 
sort of learnings there, but also learn from some of our, our partners in the U.S. that mm. we'd love to sort of work with in more more uh, uh, details. Mm. So it's, uh, you know, as we look at sort of Northern California and other, other places that are being hit by climate change, mm. some of these distributed generation plus storage and, you know, efficient distribution systems that are not connected to a bigger grid, I think are going to be really important uh, to lessons that we can learn to reduce the cost for maintenance of some of these uh, uh, remote uh, areas of the United States even. So there's mm. some interesting uh, sort of synergies I think we can, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Well, uh, go ahead, Emily. I was going to turn it right back over to you, Mr. Secretary, if you would like to wrap up our conversation with closing remarks. Uh, yes, and, and, and thank you both because um, I think when it, when it comes to, to climate and energy, we're, we're all feeling increasingly uh, the fierce urgency of now. And uh, to your point, uh, Mr. Horner, just uh, what, what so many different communities in the United States are experiencing in terms of the effects uh, of climate change are, uh, of course, increasingly uh, acute. And that just emphasizes the need uh, to act, uh, but to act in a, in a smart, uh, informed way based on uh, based on experience, based on sharing uh, sharing ideas, uh, best practices, knowledge, and so much of that is actually being accumulated by uh, by companies like uh, like yours and endeavors that you're uh, that you're engaged in in different ways. And so, uh, finding ways to make sure we're having uh, the sharing of uh, of ideas, of information, uh, that we're bringing people together in in government, across governments, in the private sector. Uh, NGOs, all of that is very much, uh, I think, part of the solution. And what I've, uh, what I've seen in, in looking at what you've been doing, uh, uh, watching the video, uh, hearing both of you, it strikes me that, that Power Hive and Capetto are really excellent examples of um, how the United States is promoting partnerships with, uh, with U.S. firms and, uh, in this case, advancing Kenya's leadership, not just in Africa, but uh, really beyond uh, for sustainable uh, renewable energy. And that's going to be a powerful example and powerful lesson, I think, for the entire world, because we're seeing that Kenya is not only a leader in the, in the region, but is poised to become a global leader for clean energy and climate action. So I've got to just tell you, we're very pleased to be uh, working with partners in Kenya to affirm uh, global leadership and commitment uh, to major climate action. Uh, so for today, just thank you for coming and sharing your thoughts, but for every day, uh, thank you for what you're doing because you're making uh, climate action real, you're making uh, access to, uh, to energy uh, real, uh, including for underserved communities, and uh, I think that's going to have a powerful positive impact uh, going forward. So it's a pleasure to get to uh, spend at least a few minutes with both of you, and I look forward to hearing more in the, in the days and weeks ahead. Mr. Secretary and Dr. Namunje and Mr. Horner, thank you all for your time. And thank you for a, a truly thoughtful conversation today on the opportunities for expanding clean energy in Kenya. Thank you all and have a good day. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, thank you very much. much. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you.